and uh, the problem is that they're not so smart and they're not so easy to use. So if you kind of make a you know, business school 101 graph of the smart axis and the easy to use axis, phones, regular cell phones are kind of right there. They're not so smart and they're you know, not so easy to use. Um, but smartphones are definitely a little smarter, but they actually are harder to use. They're really complicated. Just for the basic stuff, people have a hard time figuring out how to use them. Well, we don't want to do either one of these things. What we want to do is make a leapfrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Okay? So. We're going to reinvent the phone. Now, we're going to start with a revolutionary user interface. Is the result of years of research and development. And of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the Blackberry. Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away, and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. <laughs> you don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. And boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so, so we've been very lucky to have brought a few revolutionary user interfaces to the market in our time. First was the mouse. The second was the click wheel. And now we're going to bring multi-touch to the market. And each of these revolutionary user interfaces has made possible a revolutionary product, the Mac, the iPod, and now the iPhone. So a revolutionary user interface. We're going to build on top of that with software. Now, software on mobile phones is like, it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today, we're going to show you a software breakthrough, software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now, how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. Now, why, 
Why would we want to run such a sophisticated operating system on a mobile device? Well, because it's got everything we need. It's got multitasking. It's got the best networking. It already knows how to power manage. We've been doing this on mobile computers for years. It's got awesome security. And to write apps, it's got everything from Coco and the graphics, and it's got core animation built in, and it's got the audio and video that OS X is famous for. It's got all the stuff we want, and it's built right in to iPhone. And that has let us create desktop class applications and networking. Right? It's the internet in your pocket for the first time ever. Now, you can't, you can't really think about the internet, of course, without thinking about Google. right? And for Google, what we have on our phone, working with them, is, of course, Google Search. We have that built right into the browser. Just type what you want, hit Google, and you're off. And Google Maps. We've been working very closely with them to make this all happen. We're thrilled with the results. And it's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Eric Schmidt, Google's CEO. Congratulations, Steve. What an incredible job. So Steve, uh, you know, I, I've had the privilege of joining, joining the board, and there's a lot of relationships between the boards. And I thought, uh, you know, if we just sort of merge the companies, we could call them Apple Goo. Um, but I'm not a marketing guy. Um, what I like about this new device and the new architecture of the internet is that you can actually merge without merging. Uh, Steve says that each company should do the absolutely best thing that they can do every time, and I think he's shown it once again today. And internet architectures, right? Um, inter internet architectures allow you now to take the enormous brain trust that is represented by the Apple development team and combine that with the open protocols and data services that companies like Google and the others represented that are coming up in, in a bit to actually put them together in a seamless environment for end users. What I particularly like about this is it's the first time it's all to come together in one place. Now, from a Google perspective, what we've done is we've pushed very, very hard to partner with others, and in particular to partner with Apple, the companies, the cultures are similar, innovation, having fun while you're doing it, and also working with many, many different data services. So Steve showed a little bit of some of the components, some of the pieces, and so forth that you can do. But understand that this is a set of data that's from maps and partners and so forth, so that you really can get the full integration. The person doesn't understand how, how hard it was to get it all together. It comes together seamlessly. From my perspective, this is the first of a whole new generation of data services where these powerful-based cloud computers, Google being, we hope, a leading representative, provides HTML, XML, and other sophisticated services that the Safari browser that's embedded in the iPhone and many other of its type devices and future devices out of Apple will be able to take advantage. Steve, my congratulations to you, and this product is going to be hot. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. As a board member, you'll get one of the first ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. There is a tremendous amount of high technology in iPhone. We've been pushing the state of the art in every facet of this design. So let me just talk a little bit about it here. We've got the multi-touch screen, a first. Miniaturization, more than we've ever done before. A lot of custom silicon. Tremendous power management. OS 10 inside a mobile device. Featherweight precision enclosures. Three advanced sensors. Desktop class applications and, of course, the widescreen video iPod. We've been innovating like crazy for the last few years on this. 
and we filed for over 200 patents for all the inventions in iPhone. And we intend to protect them. So, a lot of high technology. I think we're advancing the state of the art in every aspect of this design. So, iPhone is like having your life in your pocket. It's the ultimate digital device.